Okay, let's take a look at the Royal Clutch M75. We'll need to address that really hollow sound with some tape, but for now, let's take a look at the rest of the keyboard. I really like the overall colorway of the keyboard. The light gray and blue keycaps bring a refreshing and more modern touch to my workspace, but the keycap thickness was a little bit disappointing, coming in at only 1.2 millimeters. This keyboard comes with a proprietary RK Brown switches, which are tactile switches with an operating force of 55 grams, a total travel of 4 millimeters, and an actuation point at 2 millimeters. The switches also come in stock, meaning no lube at the stem or the spring. They're all dry. As for the PCB, these are NART facing sockets, great for shine through keycaps and RGB due to the position of the LEDs. To take the board apart, you're going to need a slim prying tool like this one here. Start at the center rear of the case and shim your way to the edges, then repeat on the opposite end of the case. Next, shim the sides. Once it's open, unplug the knobs connector and then the other two connectors underneath the PCB. The gaskets are protected by these silicone socks. Oh, and did I mention that this is a gasket mounted keyboard? The chassis is dampened by this meaty silicone foam, which is already quite nice, so we're not going to do anything here. For the sandwich, this keyboard comes with a flex cut PC plate and a fitted plate foam with silicone switch pads. It's actually pretty neat. So now we're going to add one layer of moleskin to the back of the PCB. This is essentially the tape mod, but I like using moleskin instead of painter's tape. You can use whatever suits you though. We're also going to add some stabilizer pads into these slots here. This will help reduce the stabilizer rattle. Now we're going to clean out the stabilizer of any lube it had before and apply our own. These stabilizers were only looped at the wire but not at the stem or the housing, so we'll apply some lube there too. I usually use a napkin or some toilet paper squares to clean out any old lube. From there, I'll take my tweezer and stuff a small piece of napkin into the stem holes to clean out the lube there. Next, we'll take a very small dab of lube. I like to use the cap to even out the lube on my brush. We'll brush a light layer on each side of the stem. Then, we'll apply the same layer of lube inside the housing. We'll also check the stabilizer bar to see if it's tuned. If we press down on one side and the other side lifts up, then it needs to be tuned. Tuning stabilizers will prevent them from ticking or rattling. You can stick your stabilizer bars into a hollow pen shaft or grab one of these inexpensive tuners on AliExpress. I'll link it down below. And lastly, we'll give the ends of the stabilizer bars a dip into dielectric grease so they can move nice and easily. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the RGB on this keyboard. The light patterns are clean and visible, and while it's not as succinct as other keyboards, it's still very pleasant to look at. Some other features to point out, the USB dongle is neatly tucked away in the back and is magnetically secured, so it's very easy to take out or store away. This keyboard also comes with an extra USB-C port that functions as a pass-through port, so you can connect your mouse or even another keyboard to this keyboard, if you needed to. The rotary knob has two functions, the first being volume control of course, but if you click it, it allows for you to change sources from wired to Bluetooth to wireless USB. And lastly, So tell me what you think in the comments down below. The spacebar definitely needed work and with a few mods, it actually sounded really good. The tape mod added the needed stability to the switches and so we didn't even really need to loop them as they didn't sound scratchy or pingy to begin with. For this keyboard having all of these extra functionalities like its hot swappable PCB, triple connections, gasket mount, multifunctional rotary knob, a digital screen, clean RGB and solid sound dampening, I'm actually very satisfied with it. I recommend grabbing it if it's under $100, which it is at the time of this video. Check it out in the links down below. And thank you so much for all of your support. I am so happy with the growth of this channel and I really enjoy growing it with you. 
don't hesitate to drop any feedback or suggestions for what I can do to improve it. Thanks.